I got diagnosed with Parkinson's when I was like 37. So it was a transformation of my life really early in my life, really early in my career. So it was a shock and it was a wake up call. I waited about two months from the diagnosis till telling people my life has been dramatically positive, really, from getting this diagnosis with Parkinson's. Because I got to get involved on, a, on something bigger than myself. Got to be involved in a global issue. My decision was in concert with my doctor who told me early on about the option of the DBS. And fortunately or unfortunately, I was a good candidate for the surgery because of how strongly I tolerated and reacted to the levodopa. Tolerating it meant that I really got a real fluidity, fluidity out of the treatment. But I also built up an immunity to it pretty quickly, so I needed more and more to get the same results. The decision was based upon how dyskinetic I was. I was very shaky. I was very in constant movement, constant motion. I was shaking all the time. I, or I was frozen. Emotionally, I was very much experiencing the kind of pariah aspect of having Parkinson's. Even though I'd been public about it and told the world, my, my little world, about it, I still had the shame factor of when I was feeling symptomatic, I wanted to hide out and didn't want to burden people with my, the, the, the actuality of my Parkinson's. They had to actually have me do tongue twisters and rhymes and monologues and jokes so that they could hear my tongue get tied as they increase the voltage. Because the, the, the way they try to do it is they try to provide as much voltage as they need to get the effect they want, which is a smoother delivery of the levodopa through your system without turning you into a tongue-tied, bouncing off the walls robot. So they have to take you up to that point. So I was talking and they would be increasing the ampules on the system, on the electrodes, and once I got tongue-tied, once I started talking with my tongue tied, then they knew they'd had enough and they, so they, and they did it for each lead that they had in. The purpose for it was to get to the point where it was gonna be too hard to talk. So I knew that there was a l level that I had to get to. And it was a very jovial experience. The recovery process for the DBS is really a series of appointments with the movement disorder specialists or the surgeon to program the levels of the leads that are constantly on. That, that's something that, that a lot of people don't know about is that the leads that are turned on are on all the time. And it's 150 volts per second in each lead. I have full control, I have a remote control. I can turn it off if I wanted to, but my doctors are like, why? Why turn it off? I keep it on 24 hours a day now. The issue is the battery wears down. It's somewhere between like a good remote control battery and a bad car battery in terms of lifespan. So I have to go in every two to three years to get the battery replaced. It took about two years of every month or so going in for different tweaking of the ampules in the DBS. The seven years prior was a progressive illness getting worse each time and the doctors that I would see would be like this is this is standard you're getting worse this is progressive it's getting worse and for the next year of treatment I would go in and they, there'd be like a light in their in the eyes of the doctors that previously were very grim they were excited because they could adjust me Parkinson's changed my life in a profound way my life is much 
better, happier, and filled with grace than it was before. 